All right, welcome to Mocha Don is Right. I am Mocha Don, and today we've got the latest Trump news. And that latest Trump news is that the corrupt judge, I think his name is Mershon in New York, that corrupt judge, where Trump is charged with apparently not committing any crimes, but they've just decided to make up something to put him away. Uh, he has found Trump guilty uh, of nine of 10 contempt charges. He's fined Donald Trump $9,000, which Trump has to pay by Friday. And uh, he has said that if Donald Trump violates the order again, he is going to go to jail. There is a part of me that thinks, hey, baby, send him to jail and see what that gets you. We are sick of the corrupt judge in New York whose daughter works for Joe Biden and makes millions off this case uh, for the Democrat Party as a, you know, as a campaign fundraiser and an aide to Joe Biden. This is the most corrupt political trial we have ever seen in history. Anyway, here's the news source on it. Let me know what you think in the comments and please like, comment and subscribe. Well, a New York judge has found former President Donald Trump in contempt of court for repeatedly violating a gag order. Judge Juan Merchan found Trump made nine gag order violations, even though prosecutors said he had made 10. The former president was fined $9,000, which he has to pay by Friday. He was also ordered to remove seven offending posts from his Truth Social account and two from his campaign website by this afternoon. Trump says he has a right to criticize people connected to the case, but the judge disagreed with him. The judge also threatened the former president with jail time if he continues to violate the case's gag order. Yeah, so Donald Trump is in contempt, could go to jail, and is being fined $9,000 for saying things about uh, his former attorney Cohen, who's violating attorney-client privilege, who has been convicted of perjury, who a federal judge has described as a serial perjurer, and who is on TV virtually every, you know, a couple days a week. He's on TV several times a week talking about this case. And Donald Trump is not allowed to comment on him. But Cohen can sit and run his mouth. The gag order, of course, doesn't apply to things that Trump says about the judge or, or uh, members of the court. But Trump can't speak about the jurors, and he is not. And Trump can't criticize the judge's daughter, who's raising funds off of this case for the Democrat Party, which he stopped doing when the order was issued. But Cohen, the witness, because the gag order says Trump can't criticize witnesses, Cohen, the witness, is on TV every week lying about Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is not allowed to defend himself because of this unconstitutional gag order, which is ridiculous. Look, I'm a big believer that actions have consequences. You know, a $9,000 fine, probably no sweat off Donald Trump's back. The judge can't make it more, or he's indicated he would like to make it more, but he can't. So his next thing to do is throw Donald Trump in jail. Oh, do it. Just do it. I want to see that happen. Yes, actions have consequences. How about we have some consequences for criminals in this country who, who, Murder, rape, pillage, steal, vandalize, and, and nothing happens to them. You know, maybe we should have some consequences for them. What you gonna do if we come in your backyard and you had a family? Yeah. Another one bites the dust, man. I'm telling you, that's what we need to do on the right. We need to get our act together. If Donald Trump gets elected in November, and God, I pray every day that he does, I, I think there should be some payback. I don't think Donald Trump personally should spend a lot of time on it. Just, you know, sick a good Republican 
a special counsel like Jack Smith to go after these people. Anyway, that's my take on it for today. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This is the sort of thing that we can't stand in this country. We can't have this. And, and by the way, just as an aside, Joe Biden is banning books. The, the damn Democrats keep accusing Florida governors of banning books. They, they say the right wants to suppress, I don't know what it is, woke, um, gender-confused BS. But we don't. We don't actually ban any books from adults under any circumstances. We're talking about sexual books for little kids in school when we restrict books in, in school libraries. Not college libraries, mind you. These are elementary and occasionally high school libraries. There's no reason a five or six or seven year old needs to be hearing about various kinds of sex. Not straight sex, not gay sex, not trans sex, and none of that should be in your children's case. But we have um, the Biden administration's making sure that Amazon or nobody carries a books by Alexander Dugan, who is a he's a Russian writer. He's a traditionalist. He explains how the woke movement and the trans movement are at their core anti-humanist movements and how societies without faith-based, traditional, family-based sort of structures fail, and they do fail. They fail horribly. Hence the, um, the failure of the Soviet Union. Tucker Carlson did a piece on that. Uh, he did about a 30-minute interview with him. I highly suggest you go to Tucker Carlson's site on YouTube and watch that entire interview. This is the... Uh, you know, the short for it. And I, I think it's well worth it because when you understand that, that Putin, as well as this particular author, but, but it, it sort of explains why, why the WEF and all of these woke people are so opposed to Putin. Yeah, Putin's a bad guy. I get it. He's killed people. He's killed journalists. I am not supporting Putin. But that's not why they have a problem with him. They don't have a problem with people being killed. Their problem is with the fact that Putin is anti-woke and anti-New World Order because Putin at his core, perhaps his corrupt core, but Putin is a traditionalist. Check this out. Alexander Dugin is a 62-year-old Russian academic philosopher. He spent his life in Moscow. He was an anti-Soviet dissident as a young man. And now he is famous the world over, in the English language press anyway, as, quote, Putin's brain. But he is not a political figure here in Russia. He is, once again, a philosopher. And his ideas are deeply offensive to some people. In August of 2022, his only daughter was murdered in Moscow when a car bomb killed her. U.S. intelligence says she was murdered by the Ukrainian government, and we take that at face value. But what's interesting is that, once again, Alexander Dugin is not a military leader. He's not a close daily advisor to Vladimir Putin. He is a writer who writes about big ideas. And for this, his books have been banned by the Biden administration in the United States. You cannot buy them on Amazon. Banning books in the United States because the ideas inside are too dangerous. He's often described, again in the English language press, as far right. We'll let you assess. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's not far right. He's what you would call a traditional liberal just a number of years ago. But he sounds to me like, yeah, a, a traditionalist. Putin is effectively a traditionalist. And this is why they hate Putin. There are many reasons to hate Putin. Putin murders journalists. Putin murders political op uh, opponents. Putin jails rock bands with songs he doesn't like. There are many problems with Putin, but that's not why they're upset with him. They're upset with him because he is a, at his core, he's a traditionalist. He believes in family. He believes in religion. He believes in the, what has been for centuries, those kind of traditional relationships which bind a society together. 
And Alexander Dugan goes through the, you know, multi-hundred year history of this, what is now progressivism, but he describes as liberalism, and how its main goal is to destroy those bonds. So you should check out uh, Tucker Carlson's piece with Alexander uh, Dugan. Like, comment, and subscribe. That's it for me today. You have a fantastic week. Take care. Get ready, stand by.